Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. On King Honyo Husky. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon in their relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. The Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, and the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Here is a story that will go down in history as one of the biggest developments of our time. It's the story of people in underdeveloped countries the world over, opening their minds to progress and ready to help themselves come out of the dark ages. It's happening in the Orient, in Africa, in the Middle East, in South America. Its roots are in local villages. People now realize that if one man can build a mud hut as a home, four men can build a bigger mud hut for a school. Six men can build a well for pure water. These are the people, these are the villages, which CARE asks you to help through its new Freedom Village program. Your contribution will help them to build new lives. If you believe in people helping themselves to a better future, send your contribution in any amount to Freedom Village, CARE, New York 16, or any local CARE office. This message is brought to you as a public service. Dave Martin's Silver Dollar Cafe was one of the gaudiest boomtown establishments in Dawson. And its star attraction was a pretty young singer named Jane Falconer. It was early afternoon, and only a few men were on hand to applaud Jane's song. One bearded sourdough was particularly impressed. I'm going to bring her over here to our table. You, Jed, he's Dave Martin's girl. Oh, who cares about Martin? <laughs> Hi there, Janie. Hello, stranger. Come on over and join us at our table. Sorry, mister, but you'll have to excuse me. Oh, now, don't be stubborn, Janie. I may not look like it in these whiskers, but uh, I'm real good company. The answer is no. Oh. Let go of my arm. Now, oh, looky here. Are you coming peaceful like, or am I going to have it? He said no. What's that? Let her go, mister. Why, you cheek tin horn. I'll teach it interfere. <laughs> You asked for this. Oh, oh, yes, yes, are you all right? You knocked him out. Come on, Miss Jane. His partner will attend to him. Please join me at my table. Meanwhile, Dave Martin, the owner of the cafe, was seated at a table in the back room. With him were two cold-eyed, hard-jawed men. There was an empty chair at the table and a general atmosphere of impatience and irritation. Finally, one of the men said, Hey, Martin, how long do we wait for Packard to show up? I'll tell you boys my plans. You pass away to pack a later. Yeah, what are your plans, Martin? When I was in the express office this morning, I found oh. out that the express company is getting half a dozen shipments of gold from the creek this afternoon. They're all bound for Skagway and outside. But they don't leave here till tomorrow, which means they'll be in the express office safe overnight. So we grab the gold? Yeah. We'll show up at the express office tonight just before closing time. We'll make the clerk open the safe, then we'll time and gag him. When we leave, we'll lock the door from the outside, so it'll be morning before anyone finds out what happened. That sounds good. Uh, howdy, boys. Thank you, you're late. Uh, sorry, Martin. I was late. Well, you hear who's sitting in the cafe. Who? Solitaire Jack. Dick. What? Solitaire. Are you sure? Yeah. He's sitting out there as big as life with that big flashy diamond ring on his finger. What's more, Jane Falconer is at his table. I suppose he's looking for trouble, boss. I don't know. You boys stay here and tell Packard my plan for robbing the express office. I'll go and try to find out what Jackson is up to. What's he doing? 
Solitaire Jackson's face remained completely impassive and expressionless as he looked up and saw Dave Martin approaching his table. Well, well, well. My old pal, Solitaire Jackson. Hello, Martin. Yes. You two know each other? We're old, uh, old pals. Sit down, Dave. Good night. <laughs> when did you get out of prison? Two months ago. Let's see, uh... How long was your time? Uh, five years, wasn't it? You have a good memory. You know, Jane, Solitaire used to be one of the meanest, toughest gunmen west of the Rockies. Really? Hey, Solitaire, you, uh, you haven't told me why you came to the Yukon. As I told Miss Falconer, I came here to settle an account. Payment is slightly overdue. Five years overdue, to be exact. That's so? I, uh... I see you still wear that diamond solitaire on your finger. Have you ever seen me without it? No, that's a fact. Sweetheart, how did you like to have a ring like that? I wouldn't. And please don't call me sweetheart. <laughs> well, I'll leave you two to continue your chat. Order what you want, solitaire. It's on the house. Thanks, I'd rather pay. Suit yourself. And uh, Jane, don't sit here chatting with Mr. Jackson too long. You are paid to entertain all the customers. As Dave Martin returned to the back room, there was an evil glint in his eye, and his lips were twisted into an unpleasant grin. Well, what you find out, Martin? Jackson's here to make trouble, all right? Coming for you? Surely. But I have a plan to take care of Jackson, at the same time, help us get away with that express office robbery. Let's hear your plan, Martin. No, not now. I'll tell you later. First, I'm going to Marty headquarters and talk to Sergeant Preston. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Listen, all you fellows, girls, mothers, dads, everybody. There's something special for each one of you inside your package of Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats right now. It's a folder that offers you nationally known merchandise at savings up to 40% or more. Just use the little blue stars from Quaker cereal packages. They count like money towards such items for you fellows and girls as a Wilson Fielder's mitt, complete camera outfit, beautiful Love Me Baby doll, roller skate, tricycle. One of the items for you dads is a Remington Deluxe Shaver, regular $29.50 value with 10 blue stars, only $18.83, a saving of over $10. And you ladies can save $40 on a 17-jewel Benrus watch. Just buy Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, either quick or old-fashioned, round or square package. The folder inside gives you full details. Hurry, save up to 40% or more on valuable and useful merchandise. Get Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats today. <laughs> In Mother's police headquarters, Sergeant Preston was seated at a desk. The great dog, Yukon King, lay on the floor beside his chair as Dave Barton entered the room. Glad he said in. Hello, Martin. What's on your mind? Hey, I dropped in to give you a little family tip. Oh? You ever hear of a gent called Solitaire Jackson? No. Can't say that I have. Well, he's a bad man from the stage. He earned quite a reputation as a gunslinger and went to jail for armed robbery. What about him? Two months ago, he got out of prison. And now he's here in Dawson. You might be smart to keep an eye on him. Thanks for the information. May I ask why you went to the trouble to warn me? All right. I'll lay my cards on the table. I was in the States five years ago. I testified at Jackson's trial and helped him to jail. Now that he's here in Dawson, I wouldn't be surprised at what he might try to get even with me. Here's a newspaper clipping that tells about the trial. I see. Now, mind you, I still think you have reason to be on the lookout. From your own point of view, I mean. Now, uh, I look at it this way. If he should pull any jobs in the territory, then it would be a good thing for both of us if he's caught. The body to be apprehending a dangerous criminal, and I'll not have to worry about getting shot in the back some dark night. I'll check on him. Do you know where he's staying? No, but... Uh, if you want to look him up right away, you'll find him at my place, the Silver Dollar Cafe. But uh, just keep me out of it, huh? All right. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll borrow this clipping. I can get my parker and go with him. 
King accompanied the sergeant and Dave Martin to the cafe. Martin paused at the door. You did. Uh, you better go in alone, sergeant. I'll go around the back way so Jackson won't know I brought you here. What does he look like? He's a good-looking, dark-haired gent sitting at the table in the corner. You can tell him by the ring he's wearing. A big diamond solitaire. Thanks. Come along, Jim. Oh, oh, oh. Sergeant Preston had no trouble locating Solitaire Jackson. He went directly to the table where Solitaire sat alone. Your name's Jackson? That's right. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I'd like to have a few words with you. Gladly. Sit down. Thank you. Well, that's a fine dog you have. His name's Yukon King. Howdy, King. <laughs> well, what would you like to talk about, Sergeant? What's your business in the territory, Jackson? I like to travel. Did you come here to get even with Dave Martin? What do you know about Dave Martin and me? In our files, we have newspaper clippings from the States. I have one right here that tells about your trial and the evidence given by Dave Martin. Oh. Care to look at it? I've seen it. According to that clipping, Sergeant Preston, I'm a bad hombre. But I was framed for that robbery. According to the article, you were a professional bad man, a gunslinger. Huh. If you care to deny it, I'm willing to listen. All right, Sergeant Preston, I'll come clean with you. It's true I used to be wild, and I've always been handy with a gun. When I went to jail the first time for disturbing the peace, I did some serious thinking. Decided to go straight? That's right. And I did go straight. I worked as a mine guard and a railway detective. That's how I ran into Dave Martin. He led a gang of hold-up men. I got on his trail and started making things hot for him. He knew I'd catch him sooner or later, so to get me out of the way, he framed me for bank robbery. I was innocent, but I went to jail for five years. I see. And now you've followed Martin to the Yukon to get revenge. I didn't say so. All right, Jackson. But remember, you're on Canadian soil now, and we do not tolerate six-gun justice. If you shoot Martin, I promise you, you'll hang for murder. Thanks for the advice. Where are you staying in town? At the Victoria Hotel. All right. Report to the mounted police if you decide to leave town or change your address. Sure, I'll be glad to. So long, Sergeant. Bye. Come on, King. When Solitaire Jackson left the cafe, he was followed by one of Martin's men named Slade. Slade returned in half an hour and went directly to the rear room where Dave Martin waited with Packer and Red. Martin had been writing something on a piece of paper. Hey, boss, I followed Solitaire. Yep. Where's he staying? The Victoria Hotel. Good work, Slade. Well, boys, how do you like my fancy penmanship? Does this note look like a woman might have written it? <laughs> sure does, boss. Read it to Slade. Yes. Dear hey, Mr. Jackson, you are in terrible danger. Dave Martin is planning to get you. If you will meet me right away in front of the fur company warehouse near the steamboat landing, I'll tell you what I know. Signed, Jane Fogner. Hey, Martin, you're a slick one. <laughs> well, Slade, give this to one of the waiters. Tell him to take it to the desk clerk at the Victoria Hotel. Right. Packy, you go to the warehouse and wait for Jackson. Right. You'll know what to do when he shows up. Right, boss. Solitaire Jackson received the message and left the hotel immediately. He hurried through the early darkness of a Yukon winter. When he arrived in front of the fur company warehouse, Jane Faulkner was nowhere in sight. But suddenly, he heard a slight movement behind him and felt the muzzle of a gun jammed in his back. Right, keep your hands right where they are, Jackson. That message was just a trick to get me here. Yeah, you figure things out fast. Start walking straight ahead. And don't try any false moves or I'll dream. Jackson was forced to walk ahead of Packer to a cabin on the edge of town. All right, inside, Jackson. Door's unlocked. Yeah, good evening, Solitaire. Hello, Martin. It's nice of you to send a man for me. I might not have found this place by myself. Take his gun, Red. He carries him the shoulder holster. Uh -huh. Well, Solitaire, hand over your diamond ring. Anything to oblige. Thanks. I'll try it on. <laughs> the perfect fit. Man, that's a real sparkler. You know where I'm borrowing your ring, Solitaire? I'll tell you. Tonight, four men with bandanas over their faces are going to rob the express office. 
The leader will be wearing a big flashy diamond ring. And the other three will call him Solitaire. Need I say more? Martin, when it comes to framing people, you're a genius. And I speak from experience. At six o'clock that evening, Jasper Greeley, the express office manager, and Constable Owen were alone in the express office. The last customer had left. Well, Constable, it's uh, time to shut up shop. I will not do it. As Jasper Greeley walked to the front of the office to lock up, the door was suddenly pushed open. Hey, what is this? Mr. Mr. You two, Constable. Oh, hold up, huh? Oh. You punch him out of here. He went for his gun. Come on in, you boys. Close the door. Keep your hands high, mister, and walk over to the safe. Now, wait. Keep moving. With nervous fingers, Jasper Greeley worked the combination of the dial. Finally, the heavy door of the safe swung open. Say, look inside, boys. That safe is really loaded. Hey, it'll be the biggest haul we ever made. Hey, solitaire. <laughs> All right, one of you tie this gin and gag him. The other two remove the gold. Okay, right, boss. Several hours later, Sergeant Preston stopped at the express office to see if everything was all right. He knocked on the door. He waited, then rapped again. But no one answered. That's strange. Let's see if the door is locked. King, there should be two men in there. Something must be wrong. Sergeant Preston moved to the side of the office and looked through a window. By the light of his flashlight, he saw the constable sprawled face down on the floor. At a short distance away, Jasper Greeley lay with his hands tied behind his back and a gag in his mouth. King, we have to get in there. <laughs> Easier to smash this window than to break down the door. About he smashed the glass with the barrel of his gun, then knocked out the jagged edges. Wait here, King. <laughs> in another moment, Preston was through the window. After lighting the lamp, he examined the constable and found that the man was alive and not critically wounded. Then he drew a knife and freed the manager. There you are. Thanks, Sergeant. I was praying you'd show up. What happened? Four men came around. Just that was locking up. They shot the constable and got away with the gold. They locked the door on the outside. Did you recognize any of them? No, they were wearing bandanas over their faces. But the leader had a big, flashy diamond ring on his finger. One of the others called him Solitaire. Solitaire? That's right. How about the constable? The bullet grazed his head and knocked him out, but he'll be all right. Have you another key to the door? Yep. Get it while I give the constable first aid. As soon as he's conscious, I'll take him to headquarters, and then we'll look for the men who stole the gold. When Sergeant Preston returned to headquarters, he was surprised to find Jane Faulkner waiting for him. After turning the wounded constable over to the care of the police surgeon, he returned to his office. Sergeant Preston, I want to talk to you. Can you wait until tomorrow, Miss Faulkner? I'm very busy. I'll not take long. It's about Solitaire Jackson. Huh? What about him? You were talking to him this afternoon. Yes? You probably know there's bad blood between him and Dave Martin. What about it, Miss Faulkner? Well, a little while ago at the cafe, I went into Dave's office. Dave was sitting at his desk and... He had a big diamond solitaire on his face, and I thought you should know. I'm glad you told me this. It may help solve a robbery. A robbery? The express office was robbed this evening. The constable was shot. The leader of the hold-up men was wearing a solitaire diamond ring. Oh, you mean that maybe... I'm Dave... going to the hotel and check on solitaire Jackson. May I come with you? Yes, you may. Come along, King. <laughs> at the hotel, the desk clerk told about the message that had been delivered by a waiter from the cafe, and how solitaire Jackson had left the hotel immediately afterwards. The sergeant borrowed a pass key, and with Jane went to Jackson's room on the off chance that he might have left the message behind. He found it lying on the table. This is signed by you, Miss Faulkner. I sent no message to Mr. Jackson. It may have been sent to lure Jackson into a trap. What are you going to do? I'm going to put King on Jackson's scent. Meanwhile, you'd better go back to the cafe and try to act as if nothing had happened. At that same moment, the crook called Packer was reporting to Dave Martin in the back room of the cafe. Oh, I followed Jane. She went straight to Mountie headquarters. Yep, she did, huh? Then I was right. She did spot that diamond on my finger. You think she figured we did something to Jackson? That's exactly what I think. When she returns, I'll call her into this room. We'll take her to the cabin where we're holding Jackson. Yeah. We'll take her out the back door. Of the... yeah, there's only one thing. Well? She's already told about seeing the ring on your finger. The damage will be done. I'll say she lied to make trouble for me. And she won't be here to deny it. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Have you been wishing you could actually see Sergeant Preston in action? See him riding his big black horse Rex, capturing lawbreakers with the help of his courageous dog, Yukon King? 
And when winter comes, would you like to actually see the terrifying avalanches and snow slides in the coldest country of the north? Actually see a pack of huskies pulling a dog sled over endless snowdrifts? Well, listen to this. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon goes on television next week. These exciting news stories of courage, bravery, romance, mystery will fascinate men, women, boys, and girls and will be brought to you on a coast-to-coast TV network starting next Thursday, September 29th by all the Quaker cereals, Quaker puff wheat and rice, Quaker oats and mother's oats, Muffet shredded wheat, and Quaker Paco 10. Now, did you get that date? Write it down. It's next Thursday evening, September 29th, the premiere of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon on television. It's something new and different in television for the whole family. Check your newspaper for the time and the station nearest you. Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston left the hotel, King followed Jackson's scent down to the waterfront where he had been taken prisoner. From there, the trail led to a small windowless cabin on the outskirts of town. Inside the cabin, Solitaire Jackson was gagged and tied to a chair, while Red and Slade were seated nearby. The crooks were taken completely by surprise as Sergeant Preston kicked open the door. Get your hands up, pull the door, Barney. Hello, Kenny. Oh, don't shoot, Barney. I'm reaching. You smashed my hand. My bullets struck your gun, you're not hurt. They're both under arrest. Keep your hands up. Sergeant Preston disarmed the crooks and then ordered Slade to untie Solitaire Jackson and remove his gag. I'll stand beside your pal and face the wall. Yeah, hey, all right. Watch them, King. <laughs> How did you find me, sir? King trailed you here from your hotel. I suppose it was the express office robbery that made you go looking for me. That and the fact that Dane Falconer suspected something had happened to you. What do you mean? She saw your ring in Dave Martin's possession and became worried. She came to headquarters and told me about it. She was worried about me? She thought Dave might have killed you. I see. And look, Sergeant, about that robbery. Martin pulled that job wearing my ring. I thought as much. There's the gold right over there against the wall. With your testimony, we should have no trouble convicting Martin and these two of the robbery. Handcuff those two cooks, Jackson. Let's do fast, Mr. Martin. Hey, what? Hey, turn slow. You come and drop your gun. Boss, you showed up right at the right time. I heard Preston and Stubbard here talking through the open door. All right, Peggy, bring in the girl. All right, get moving, sister. Jane. Oh, thank heavens you're alive. If she hadn't fretted about you, Jackson, she wouldn't be in trouble. Yeah, what are we going to do with them, Dave? There's only one thing we can do. Get rid of all three of them. Martin, you're not going to get rid of anybody. What makes you think that, Preston? Because you've forgotten something. Take him, then! The great dog suddenly caught Dave Martin by surprise, knocking him to the floor. Packer turned in dismay at the sudden development. Before he could turn back, Preston signed him. As the two remaining cooks jumped forward to help their friends, Solitaire waded into them. You skunk! Preston shot a fist with pile driver forced to Packer's chin. Packer staggered, his eyes blazed, and he slumped to the floor unconscious. Preston glanced quickly at Dave Martin. When he saw that King was holding the outlaw leader to the floor, he turned to help Solitaire, who was trying to battle both Slade and Red. I'll take one of them, Jackson. Well, he grabbed Red and threw him to the floor. Red was used to rough and tumble fighting with no holes barred. Rolling over quickly, he sprang up at Preston with a murderous look in his eye and snatched the knife from his boot. I'll tell you, Preston. Preston dodged the sweeping knife. He ducked and closed in with a sledgehammer blow to start him from his knees. Sergeant Smith caught Red squarely on the jaw and sent him sprawling to the floor unconscious. Meanwhile, Solitaire knocked down Slade. All right, all right, I'm listening. Don't hit me again. Uh, this All right, King, that'll do, boy. On your feet, Martin. It looks like things are under control, Sergeant. With your help, Solitaire and King. <laughs> King was the first to get his man. I just wish I could have slugged Martin. Don't worry about that. Your testimony will help put Martin right where he puts you, behind bars, and he'll stay there for a long time. We'll tie these four and take them in. Before you go, Martin, hand over my diamond ring. Uh, All right, take it. I hope it brings you rotten luck for the rest of your life. It's going to bring me the best luck I ever had. That is, if... Well, look, Jane, I... I know you told Martin this afternoon that you don't like this kind of a ring. I suppose you think it's too flashy. Oh, no. What I meant was that I wouldn't like to have Dave give me such a ring. That kind or any other kind. What if someone else were to give you such a ring? Well, I... I couldn't accept a gift like that from anyone unless... Unless I intended to marry her. Jane, do you suppose that after we become better acquainted, you'd wear this ring for me? <laughs> if you gave away that ring, you'd lose your name. You'd no longer be called Solitaire. I could do without that name. <laughs> and as for my last name, 
Well, I'd sure like to share it with you. <laughs> I'd like to see you often. Real often. That's the best way I know to become better acquainted. <laughs> I'll take care of that. Well, okay. now that that's settled, this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Young America keeps its musical knowledge up to date by listening to Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond. Every Saturday, Johnny presents a roundup of the platters that are making musical history from coast to coast. In addition, he brings such outstanding big-name guests as Teresa Brewer, the Fontaine Sisters, and Bill Haley's Comets. Guest disc jockeys from every section of the country appear regularly to report to listeners on the top tunes in each of their hometown areas. And interesting teenagers appear on Phonorama Time to bring their viewpoints on what young America is thinking about and talking about in music and other fields as well. Everyone loves Johnny Desmond, and everyone loves his Phonorama Time show. So gather your friends and fellow music fans around this Saturday and every Saturday for the musical session you can't afford to miss. Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond on Mutual over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, I want you to get up to the Black Forest as quickly as you can. Trouble among the Indians, sir? Trouble between the Indians and the miners on Big Bear Creek. Chief One Nook's son is dead. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He was a fine boy. Maybe that he was murdered. It'll be up to you to find out, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'll start for the Black Forest at once. But as the sergeant drives out of Dawson with the great dog King at the head of the team, two more Indians are found dead in the northern forest. And Chief One Nook swears that only a massacre of the miners can even the score. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.